So you are involved in the urbanisation process. It can be a positive force for the development of your country, both in urban and rural areas. But it can also have big problems if towns don't have skilled people or the buildings and infrastructure they need. Everything is related to everything. Jobs are related to manufacturing and factories depend on electricity, but they also need loans from banks and skilled workers whose families need access to school buildings with good teachers and healthcare centres with good doctors. So big cities and smaller towns need a balanced mix of functions that work together and support each other. The regional machine works if the bits and pieces work together. However, a function can be absent where it is needed. If a pharmacy is absent, people have to travel far to get medicine. If a car mechanic is absent, trucks lose transport time. Sometimes a combination of functions is absent. A school does not have water and electricity. Whereas other schools do and function better. But how can we get the complete picture of opportunities and problems in regional development? It is a lot of information. The economist holds a piece of the puzzle. So does the health expert and the education expert, or any other expert. Everyone sees parts and no one sees the relations. Everyone has intuitive understanding and there is no shared knowledge. So we need a shared and factual understanding of the spatial structure of the settlements in a country to plan for urbanisation. And we can get the overview for any territorial unit in your country, let's say municipalities, by making an inventory of the presence of functions in all municipalities. And collect the present functions in the matrix of functions, so the matrix shows for each municipality which functions it has or which it doesn't have. From the matrix of functions, the hierarchy of settlements emerges by sorting the most frequent functions to the left and districts with most functions to the top. We can now identify groups of basic functions that almost all municipalities have, intermediate functions that the bigger municipalities have and central functions that only a few municipalities have we can show the hierarchical network of settlements by mapping the hierarchy and thus find local, intermediate and central urban centres. With the matrix of functions, we can understand four things. Firstly, we can empirically find what the basic, intermediate and central functions are, not as wishes but as reality. Secondly, we see gaps in columns and can conclude whether a single function is well distributed over the territory. Thirdly, we see gaps in rows and can conclude whether a single municipality has all the functions it needs. And fourthly, we can plan for action how municipalities can move from basic to intermediate level or from intermediate to central level. Hence, we can develop functions in the right places and put the resource of the country to value by creating development scenarios with the matrix of functions. Hence, we say that the matrix of functions allows the experts to communicate about the territory, gives maximum insight with easily available data and underpins spatial development scenarios. The matrix of functions gives a shared and factual understanding of the spatial structure of the settlements in a country to plan for urbanisation.